Neural networks are a pretty old algorithm that was originally motivated by the goal of having machines that can mimic the brain. Now, in this class, of course, I'm teaching neural networks to you because they work really well for different machine learning problems and not certainly not just because they're biologically motivated. But in this video, I'd like to give you some of the background on neural networks so that we can get a sense of uh, what we can expect them to do both in the sense of applying them to modern day machine learning problems, as well as for those of you that might be interested in the maybe the big AI dream of someday building truly intelligent machines, um, also uh, how neural networks might pertain to that. The origins of neural networks was as algorithms that try to mimic the brain. And there was the sense that if we want to build learning systems, well, why not mimic perhaps the most amazing learning machine we know about, which is uh, perhaps the brain. Neural networks came to be very widely used throughout the 1980s and 1990s, and for various reasons, its popularity diminished in the late 90s. But more recently, neural networks have had a major recent resurgence. Um, one of the reasons for this resurgence is that neural networks are a computationally somewhat more expensive algorithm. And so it was only, you know, maybe somewhat more recently that uh, uh, computers became fast enough to really run large-scale neural networks. And because of that, uh, as well as a few other technical reasons, which we'll talk about later, modern neural networks today are the state-of-the-art technique for um, many applications. So when you think about mimicking the brain, well, well, the human brain does so many amazing things, right? The brain can uh, learn to see, process images, learn to hear, learn to process our sense of touch. It can, you know, learn to do math, learn to do calculus. And the brain does so many different amazing things. It seems like if you want to mimic the brain, it seems like you have to write lots of different pieces of software to mimic all of these different fascinating, amazing things that the brain does. But there's this fascinating hypothesis that uh, the way the brain does all of these different things is not with like a thousand different programs, but instead the brain does the way the brain does it is with just a single learning algorithm. This is just a hypothesis, but uh, let me share with you some of the evidence for this. This part of the brain, that little red part of the brain, is your auditory cortex. And the way you're understanding my voice now is there's, um, your ear is taking the sound signal and routing the sound signal to your auditory cortex, and that's what's allowing you to understand my words. Neuroscientists have done the following fascinating experiment, where you cut the wire from the ear to the auditory cortex, and you rewire, in this case, an animal's brain, so that the signal from the eyes, from the optic nerve, eventually gets routed to the auditory cortex. If you do this, it turns out the auditory cortex will learn to see. And this is um, in every single sense of the word see as we know it. So if you do this to the animals, the animals can perform visual discrimination tasks. And that is they can look at images and make appropriate decisions based on the images. And they're doing it with that piece of brain tissue. Here's another example. That red piece of brain tissue is your somatosensory cortex. That's how you process your sense of touch. If you do a similar rewiring process, then the somatosensory cortex will learn to see. Because of this and other similar experiments, these are called neural rewiring experiments, there's a sense that if the same piece of physical brain tissue can process sight or sound or touch, then maybe there's uh, one learning algorithm that can process sight or sound or touch. And instead of needing to implement a thousand different programs or a thousand different algorithms to do the you know, thousand wonderful things that the brain does, maybe what we need to do is figure out some approximation or to whatever the brain's learning algorithm is and implement that and let the brain learn by itself how to process these different types of data. To a surprisingly large extent, it seems as if we can plug in almost any sensor to almost any part of the brain and sort of within reason, the brain will learn to deal with it. Here are a few more examples. Um, on the upper left is an example of learning to see with your tongue. The way it works is um, this is actually a system called BrainPort undergoing you know, FDA trials now to help blind people see. But the way it works is 
You strap a grayscale camera to your forehead facing forward taking, and that takes a low resolution grayscale image of what's in front of you and you then run a wire to an array of electrodes that you place on your tongue so that each pixel gets mapped to a, pixel, to a location on your tongue where maybe a high voltage corresponds to a dark pixel and a low voltage corresponds to a, a bright pixel and um, even as adults today, with this sort of system, you and I will be able to learn to see, you know, in tens of minutes with our tongues. Here's a second example of a human echolocation or human sonar. So there are two ways you can do this. You can either um, snap your fingers or click your tongue. Um, can't do it very well. And, uh, <clears throat> but there are blind people today that are actually being trained in schools to do this and learn to interpret the pattern of sounds bouncing off your environment as sonar. So uh, if, if after you search on YouTube, there are actually videos of this amazing kid who tragically because of uh, cancer had has his eyeballs removed. So this is a kid with no eyeballs. But by snapping his fingers, he can um, walk around and never hit anything. He can ride a skateboard. Um, he can shoot a basketball into a hoop. And uh, this is a kid with no eyeballs. Third example <clears throat> is the uh, haptic belt where if you have a uh, strap around your waist, a uh, ring of buzzers, and always have the northmost one buzzing, you can give a human a direction sense, similar to maybe how birds can you know, sense, the, what the, sense where north is. And uh, some bizarre example, but if you plug a third eye into a frog, the frog will learn to use that eye as well. So it's pretty amazing to what extent is as if you can plug in almost any sensor to the brain, and the brain's learning algorithm will just figure out how to learn from that data and deal with that data. And um, there's a sense that if we can figure out what the brain's learning algorithm is and you know, implement it or implement some approximation to that algorithm on a computer, maybe that would be our best shot at you know, making real progress towards the AI, the artificial intelligence dream of someday building truly intelligent machines. Now, of course, um, I'm not teaching neural networks, you know, just because they might give us a window into this far off AI dream, even though I'm personally, that's one of the things that I personally work on in, in my research life. Uh, but the main reason I'm teaching neural networks in this class is because it's actually a very effective state-of-the-art technique for modern day machine learning applications. So in the next few videos, we'll start diving into the technical details of neural networks uh, so that you can apply them to modern day machine learning applications and get them to work well on, on problems. Um, but, but for me, you know, one of the reasons they excite me is that um, maybe they give us this, this window into uh, what we might do if we're uh, also thinking of what algorithms might someday be able to learn in, in manners similar to humans can.